right here where you can see the wall is where the tunnel would be. Oh yes, these are tunnel walls. From here yep. all the way to there. And the highway loop will be right above right us. Right above us. Oh wow. That's really cool. Nice. But all the other curbing that we see is what you were talking about. Yeah. Those are, are really the retaining walls that are yeah. allowing us to um, build up the embankment. So if you look at either side here, to the left and the right, yeah. this is where the, the width of the embankment will be. And dirt is then piled up at an angle as you go through there. And the road is then built on top of it. And the road will be going over. So we're actually in the tunnel right now. Mm -hmm. And so the highway loop will be right above us. Exactly, for people who don't know, what, what are standards when we're talking about cars? When it comes to standards, it really is the uh, a lot of foundation for design work, and also when it comes to CAVs related to interoperability. When you've got so many systems interacting, the vehicle with the smartphone, with the infrastructure, they have to communicate, they have to uh, interact with one another. And so therefore you need some basic standards by which to do so. And so that's really where our, our, one of our primary focus areas. Uh, what's a, maybe a good example of a standard that um, people could expect to be tested or validated at the American Center for Mobility? Well, what, what we're looking at in the first instance is looking at a number of scenarios and outcomes because that's very much technology agnostic. And then we're looking at these things so we can then develop those validation standards so it's then safe for the vehicles to go out on the road with the buying public. So for the last several months we've been in discussion with both SA International and, and uh, ITE, Institute of Transportation Engineers. Basically they're representing, shall we say, traditionally the vehicle element for SAE and then infrastructure for ITE. And we put together MOUs, Memorandums of Understanding, really as a, as a foundation for, for working together. And what we're then looking at is the environment for a connected and automated vehicles, really establishing how we can develop standards, ACM can then convene, bring the institutions together, and then really accelerate the deployment of the technology. And so that's the whole basis of that. And we felt that SAE and ITE were ideal places to start because they were representing the vehicle and then the infrastructure, and then more to follow. A lot of other larger companies have many of their own test tracks around the country and around the world. Uh, but there's a big advantage for all of them to come here and, and to kind of work on those standards together. Is that correct? There are many, many proving grounds in the world and they're still very, very busy in terms of vehicle development, whether it be tire development, brake development, vehicle ride and handling, performance testing. None of this work goes away. So if you then look at, well, how are we going to develop autonomous vehicles and different technology, they can't just add that on to already the proving grounds which are already very busy. So that's where uh, ACM comes in. For one, we can handle then the work uh, that they can't carry out at their own proving grounds, but also um, we have we are uniquely positioned because at ACM we actually have the real world test environments. It's not a traditional proving ground just to test braking, just to test suspension. It's here to test connected and automated vehicles in real world test environments. <laughs>